Hey everyone, it's Game Fruit Pulp, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Building Toronto. Today we're going to be taking a look at a smaller building, uh, more insignificant on the project, but one that I thought you guys might be interested in seeing regardless. And this video is sort of a, uh, a video in combination with a survey. And, and the survey question is going to be, do you want me to showcase videos like or buildings like this in the future? Uh, this is a smaller building that I normally wouldn't even showcase on the channel, um, but I figured it was better to put out content about a building that has a story, like every building in the city, uh, and something that you guys might find enjoyable. So this is a smaller building. I don't normally showcase buildings this insignificant that we build on the project, but let me know what you guys think and if you want to have, uh, have buildings like this showcased in the future. So today, before we jump into it, Quick word, obviously, from our good friend, the subscribe button. If you are enjoying the videos, be sure to hit that to catch uh, future content that comes out on the channel. Uh, jumping right into it today, we're going to be taking a look at the Birkbeck building, which is located on 8 to 10 Adelaide Street East in the city of Toronto. Uh, it was built in 1910 by uh, architect George W. Goinlock. It was designated a National Historic Site of Canada on... Um, June 16th, 1986, and was designated under the Ontario Heritage Act in 1976. It is also the home of the Ontario Heritage Centre and their office, which is kind of uh, interesting and unique because it's a heritage building that houses the Heritage Office. Uh, so today we're going to be reading about the Heritage Building from their website and from uh, the website of the Ontario Heritage Trust. A uh, really cool website, got some stories on, on a few different buildings. Uh, it's got some programs for you to learn more and all that kind of good stuff. So be sure to check out that website as well. It's linked in the description of the video. So, when the principals of the Canadian Birkbeck Investments and Savings Company decided in 1907 to build their new office, they chose a highly desirable site. 10 Adelaide Street East was a stone's throw from Young and King Streets, a busy streetcar ran along Adelaide, and the new location would benefit from the daily traffic of the nearby post office, courthouse, and several other financial institutions. The Canadian Birkbeck Investment and Savings Company was the initial owner of what is today the Ontario Heritage Centre, the Ontario Heritage Trust's headquarters. The company was one of a group of financial institutions that emerged in the late 19th century to provide mortgages and debentures. In keeping with a common practice of the day, the company required a building that would not only house its banking services and corporate offices, but would also include several floors of retail office space that could be used as a source of revenue and future expansion space. Award-winning architect, Toronto architect George W. Goinlock had just achieved prominence when he was commissioned to design the company's new headquarters. He already had three bank buildings to, credit, uh, to his credit by this time. The Birkbeck building represents Goinlock's earliest use of the Beaux Arts style of architecture that was becoming popular with financial institutions for the image of stability and prosperity it projected. Between 1908 and 1909, the building is a fine example of Beaux Arts architecture Sorry, built between 1908 and 1909, the building is a fine example of Boris architecture and construction methods considered to be state-of-the-art at the time. The building's fireproofed steel structure with terracotta infill was no doubt a response to the Great Fire of 1904 that had devastated much of downtown Toronto. Gornlock's initial design called for a seven-story building, but for reasons unknown, the additional stories were not built. 10 Adelaide Street remains the property of the... Uh, remained the prop property of the company and its successor, the Canadian Mortgage and Investment Company, until 1927 when the building was sold to Standard Bank. Ownership of the structure subsequently passed to, uh, to several corporations and individuals before the Ontario Heritage Trust purchased it in 1985. The building, building has been designated a National Historic Site for its historical and architectural significance. It is owned and operated by the Trust. In addition to serving as office spaces for the Trust, the building, uh, building also provides conference and reception facilities. After its acquisition, considerable work was done to restore the building and demonstrate the adaptive reuse of, of a heritage office building. The trust has maintained and reinstated original details, especially in the public areas of the lower two floors, allowing a genuine understanding of Edwardian architecture during one of Canada's most significant periods of growth. The restoration of the former b uh, banking hall, the gallery, in 2002 incorporated traces of many changes traces of the many changes of the room to the room while recovering the 1909 scheme of the Birkbeck period. Uh, the building is fully accessible and like uh, they mentioned it is the home of the Ontario Trust uh, Ontario Heritage Trust office. So when we look at our build a couple other unique facts about it. Um, the interior I tried to capture to the best of my abilities. So the main floor what the floor plan I sort of set up is a uh, Something I pictured to be sort of like a wedding venue. So you have uh, obviously the reception area, you have a separate dining area, you have a kitchen, and then you have like the bridal suite with the safe inside there. And then on the second floor, 
uh, you have a sort of office space that I tried to experiment with some newer blocks and some new walls. I'm not really super sure how I feel about how it turned out, but um, that's what I did on the second floor. And then the third and fourth floors are uh, meeting, large meeting rooms that uh, I gathered based on a picture I found of the interior of the building online. Another interesting thing is this building has a heritage point on our map. So um, if you are on the server, you can go and right click the heritage point to gain a book about the building. And that just basically includes everything I read over today. And uh, the facade of this building, the front facade was built originally by Flaming Yong. And then I made some tweaks to it. And then I did the remainder of the building myself. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It was a building that I sort of struggled to get started with. But once I got started, it was one that went pretty by, pretty quickly and pretty uh, pretty easily, to be honest. It was something that I enjoyed building and something that I think turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with the, the main floor area at the interior. And uh, I'm also happy with how the... Uh, how the meeting rooms turned out as well. The second floor is not my favorite, but you live and you learn. And every single time we build one of these, I get better as a builder. So let me know what you guys think of the building. And that, that is going to be everything for this video. Like I said, let me know what you think about these smaller, shorter videos about less significant buildings and whether you want to have them uh, show showcased on the channel in the future. Again, it's only going to be more content for you guys, but normally smaller buildings like this, I don't normally do a video on. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning viewer and you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and share the channel with some of your friends uh, so that we can continue to grow this community. And check out the map for yourself on aneasycraft.net. Once you join the server, do slash server Toronto to get to the Toronto map. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. My name is Gamefruit Pulp, and I'll catch you guys all next time. Have a good one.